If you use one of these, a Garmin running watch, then you will be familiar with this. This is the Garmin Connect app, and it's what you sync this with in order to get all your stats. But did you know you can also get this on Garmin Connect Online? This is the web version and can be found at connect.garmin.com. You can do this either on desktop or on mobile, but you might be thinking, why on earth would I want to do it on mobile when I've got the app? Well, there is one major reason, and that is dashboards. With GarminConnect.com, you can create custom dashboards to show you exactly what metrics you want right when you log in. You can have a total of five custom dashboards with 36 mini tile views, 63 additional tile views across 40 categories, giving you up to 99 tiles on a dashboard at any one time. And that's excluding variations and reports. So how do you do it? Visit connect.garmin.com and sign in with your regular sign-in information. It's the same one you use for the app. It's the same one when you set up a new watch. Once you log in, you will be dumped straight into the daily summary tab. This will give you an overview of your day and is a dashboard of sorts, but we can do a little bit better because you actually have the option to set your custom dashboard as your default homepage. If you go to profile and account in the top right hand corner by clicking on your face, go down to account settings. Then if it's not already pre-selected, go into display settings, click on the drop down and choose dashboard. That means every time you log in from now on, you will go straight to the dashboard section of the site. By default, there'll be a few dashboards already set up under dashboards, and these actually take up slots in that maximum of five custom dashboards. So if you want five of your own, you're gonna to have to delete some of the default ones. One of the default ones is activity tracking. This is actually a pretty good starting point for what you might wanna track, and it'll give you an idea of what sort of thing you can have on your custom dashboard. And you can also move stuff around and remove tiles you don't want and add tiles you do. Or if you're happy with it, then that's your default and away you go. So what can you actually have on a custom dashboard? Well, to save you time, I've actually created an all you can eat dashboard, which is every single tile that you can add in the order in which you can add them. So let's take a quick look. First thing to mention is that dashboards are responsive. So as I resize this window, you can see the tiles are gonna move around. This does mean that it can be tricky to have tiles exactly where you want it, depending on the size of the screen you're working to. If, however, for instance, you're gonna look at this custom dashboard on your phone through the web browser, it will go in a kind of column view and then you can just put them in the order that you want in that column view. So if I squeeze this down to a one tile setup, you can see they're just gonna go one above the other and then they stay in that particular order. So whilst I'm in this view, I'm just gonna take you through all of the tiles that are available. I'm not gonna go in depth into each tile, but I'll give you an overview of what sort of thing you can expect from each tile that you add. Each of the tile categories has what they call a mini tile view, which is this one here at the top. This is basically a shortcut to take you to that section of the site. So if I click on activities, you can see it's jumped down to the activities section of the site and then it's gonna show me all of my activities. Then I'll have to go back to the dashboard and it's gonna take me back to the top. So how I've laid out this all you can eat dashboard is I've used a mini tile view for each of the categories that are available to you. And then I've put all of the different permutations of the tile views underneath. So activities is the first category that you can add. And this has two additional tile views here. You've got one that shows you your most recent activity and then one that shows you a list of a bunch of previous activities to that. You can click on any one of those and again it will take you into that specific activity. Many of the tiles like this most recent activity allow you to make some adjustments to that activity within the tile. So I can change the name of this activity by clicking on here. I can change it to running afternoon and then I don't have to go into that specific activity to change it anywhere else. I can do it right there within the tile. You can also on many of the tiles flick through additional dates. So this is the most recent activity and then I can scroll back through previous days. And that's all the tile views available for activities. Next is badges where there's only one additional tile view. This is gonna show you all of your most recently earned badges. And again, for this one, you can flick through at the bottom. Body battery has two additional tile views and they're gonna be a variation on the same thing. So both of these tiles are going to show you your body battery for today and this one is on a kind of line graph and then you've got one that's on a kind of gauge again both of these are going to allow you to flick through to previous days for the calendar tiles there are three additional tile views you have one that shows you any upcoming events one that shows you your calendar for the week and this is going to have any activities that you've either already completed or anything that's scheduled in and then one for the month and again that works the same way next up is calories in and out there's only one additional tile view for this and 
you need to connect to a third party app to actually track this. Challenges has two additional tile views. The first one is any current challenges you're involved in. So you can see here, I'm involved in a 5K steps challenge. It will show you whereabouts you are in position, which for this particular tile on this particular day, I'm actually in first, which is pretty good. And the second tile view allows you to join additional challenges. Next one up is core stats. This is for golf. You've got two additional views here. One is gonna give you just a golf course list and the next one is gonna give you a recent golf course list. The next one is also courses, but they are not to be confused because this is courses that you may run or cycle. This has only got one additional tile view and this will show you a list of any courses that you have created and if you haven't like me then you can actually create a course by clicking the button here create course and it will take you into that part of the site where you can create a new course devices is next and this doesn't actually have its own mini tile view it's just one single tile and it will show you a recent device and here you can download some software updates and join beta programs etc so in this example i've recently been testing the venue 2 plus and that's what's showing on this tile next up is floors climbed and there's only one additional tile view for this one and to be honest, it doesn't seem to be working because I have had my Garmin on all day and I've been up and down the stairs and it's tracked nothing. But you can see if it was working, it would show you on a gauge versus your goal whereabouts you were. And then you can flick through previous days down at the bottom, just like you can with some of the others. If you wanted to adjust your goal, you can also do that within the tile. Underneath that is gear. If you're one of those people that likes to track what gear you're using within the Garmin app, like your trainers or your golf clubs or your bike, then this tile will show you where you are in relation to that goal for this piece of equipment. So here you can see I have a pair of running trainers on here that I was at one time tracking and I got to 24% of the goal that I set. Um, and then to be honest, I stopped using it for tracking. I actually do most of that in the Nike Run Club app and therefore this is probably a little bit out of date. I mean, I haven't run in these particular trainers for probably two and a half years, but if you do, you can track it on here. Underneath that is goals with one additional tile view and this is pretty simple. You set a goal and then you track against it. Personally, I don't usually set goals on Garmin, so I did this one last week just to test out how it worked and you can see there, it just shows you again, similar to some of the other gauge tiles, what percentage you have completed against your goal. Next up is groups where there are four additional tile views, although if you're not in any groups, then they're all gonna be pretty blank as you can see here, the four views that are actually available to you if you were in a group are group details, activity feed, weekly and challenge leaderboard. So based on whatever group you were in, it would show you where you were. If you do want to join a group, there is a search facility in there where you can try and find something. Next is health snapshot. There's only one tile for this and it shows you just an overview of your general health stats, heart rate, SpO2, things like that. Again, this is one of the tiles where you can edit within the tile so you can change the name of the snapshot and give yourself a clue as to what you was doing when the snapshot was taken. It gives you the date and time underneath here. And you can also add comments if you wanted to. Just click on this little pen icon here and then you can add some comments in there if you need to. Underneath that is heart rate. Again, there's only one tile view for this one and that'll give you an overview of your heart rate readings throughout the day, assuming that you have that feature turned on on your device. Hydration is next and this has one tile view on here. You can actually add your hydration. So if you get to the end of the day and you wanna add your hydration on your dashboard, then you can just add it directly in this tile. You can either do it using the plus and minus buttons here and it will do 250 mils at a time or you can use these three buttons at the bottom and add it a bit quicker. If you wanna change what these increments are, you can actually do that in the settings. Next up is insights. The first one being a list view. This gives you an idea of goals that you've hit throughout the day. So here you can see I've hit some step targets and they'll be on there. But in my opinion, the more interesting tile is the one below, which is the insights comparison tile. And that will show you whereabouts you rank versus other people in your age group. You can see here, for instance, for running, it's telling me I've run further than 52% of people that use the app in my age range. And then you've got another one you can flick through for steps, floors, and sleep. Presumably for floors, I rank nowhere because for some reason it doesn't seem to be tracking it. Underneath that is intensity minutes. There are two tile views available for this. One is for the day and one is for the week. One is more graph based and will show you your sleep on there and any activities that you carry out. And the other is more of like a gauge versus your target. So you can see where you are versus your goal and how that intensity is made up, either by moderate exercise or vigorous exercise. Next up is leaderboards. If you were in an event, 
then you would have a leaderboard here and you could see where you were on that leaderboard. I'm not, so I can't. Newsfeed has two tiles. The first one being all of the activities that have been completed by people that are in your connections. And the second one being the leaderboard. Again, you can see where you rank against those connections that you've got. So just in the course of recording this video, it looks like I've dropped to second. Maybe I need to get up and walk around. It's okay, I'm gonna play badminton later. I see myself going back up to the top of that list. The next tile is for Pace Pro, of which there is only one tile, and it relies on you having set up Pace Pro with a strategy, and I haven't done any of that, so I can't give you much insight as to what would be on that tile, but if you have, that's where it would be. Below that is another golf tile, performance stats. There's only one tile, and if you had played, then all of your stats would be on that tile. But again, I'm not much of a golfer, so there's nothing on there. Below that is personal records. There's only one tile for this, and these are automatically generated. This will give you your personal records for 1K, 1 mile, 5K, 10K, half marathon, and a marathon, as well as your longest run, which for me was the marathon. Next up is power guide. Again, this is gonna rely on you having set up a power guide, and again, I haven't done it, so I can't really tell you what will be on there. Underneath that, there are two lots of Pulse Ox tiles, each with one additional tile view. They both give you a very similar view of the same thing for that day. It's just that the second set of tiles is based around acclimation and the first is just regular. So unless you're somebody that's monitoring your elevation quite a lot, then you're probably going to stick with the first one. Next up is reports where there are four additional tile views, each of which show you roughly the same graph just over different time frames. So you get either the last seven days, four weeks, six months or the last year. Respiration follows that where there is one additional tile view. This is going to show you your respiration for the day on a graph and again you can flick through the days and it'll give you a bunch of averages. There's another couple of tiles around golf for scorecards. This will give you your last scorecard and a list of recent scorecards. Segments has one additional tile view and again you're only going to be listed on here if you'd set up your privacy settings correctly which I haven't so I'm not actually participating in segments but if you were then that's where they'd be. Sleep has six additional tile views and they're all going to show you a variation of the same information across the previous night's sleep and in different ways. So you can have this simplified version against your target and how it's broken down. You could have that more specifically spread over the timeline of when you went to sleep and when you woke up. You could have that same timeline, but also include movement. You could have that same timeline, but with your SpO2 values. And you can have that same timeline with your respiration rate. And then one of the tiles that I've got nestled in the middle here is gonna give you your sleep score, which again, for some reason, hasn't tracked for this example which is a bit confusing because it's saying it hasn't recorded any sleep data, yet all of these other graphs are populated. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. The next two tiles I have are based around solar. These don't have any mini tile views, they just have individual tiles. So one is for solar charge and one is for solar intensity. And you'd only use these if you've got a watch like this. This is the Instinct 2. Um, it's got solar charging on it. So if you wanted to track how well this was doing on a tile, you could add those. Underneath that is steps. These are the same tiles that you see on the daily summary. So you're gonna get one that's your today view versus your goal, and you're gonna get one that's a list of previous days. Stress has two tiles, one in detailed graph form and one in simplified graph form, or timeline view and balanced view as they call it. Another couple of golf ones around swing analysis, which is your most recent and a whole list of sessions. A single tile dedicated to training plans, of which I don't have one, so it's blank. But again, if I wanna get started, there's a link here and I can add a training plan. One tile for weight. This again is one of those tiles where you can actually interact with it directly. You can add a weigh in and a goal directly into the tile. And then finally is the workouts tile of which there is one additional tile view and that will show you all your most recent workouts. So that's everything you can have. That is literally every single tile added in all the different views. But you're unlikely to actually do that and how do you do it? So let's start a brand new dashboard. I'm gonna set one up for running just because that's the thing that I do most of and we can add some tiles and mess around with some of the options. So first things first, I'm gonna make the window a little bit bigger so we've got a few more tiles on screen at once. And then you can see I've only currently got four custom dashboards, so I've still got an add dashboard button. So I'm gonna click that add dashboard button and start a new one. So first of all, you have to give it a title. If you click on that now, you can see it's a completely blank dashboard. No prizes for guessing that to add a new tile, 
you just click on the plus button. This in turn is going to bring up all of the categories that you can add a tile for. This is the order in which I put them on my all you can eat dashboard. So first of all, I'm going to add an activities tile. So click on the tile and then you can see it adds that tile straight away. But each of those categories has more than one tile view as we've just seen. So how do I change the tile view? This is the default one. If I click on the cog in the top right hand corner, then you can see I've got a few additional options. So I've got a recent activity, which is the default, and then I've got a list view. So if I click on the list view, this is going to give me all of my previous activities. So for this example, I'm actually going to put it back to the recent activity. Then what I might do, because I might want to jump into the activities, is I might add a mini tile for that one as well. So same thing, go up to the plus, click on activities. You can see it's defaulted to adding the exact same tile again, and then I can go and change it to a mini view tile. Now I'd prefer it to be the other way around. So if I float over the top of this tile, you can see that I get the hand, then I can pick that one up. And then you get this kind of gray indicator here that will show you whereabouts you can drop it. So for this one, I'm going to drop it above. Then I'm going to add another tile. Let's say I want to add one for pulse ox. And then let's say I want to add insights because I want to see whereabouts I'm performing versus other runners. But I'm going to change that view to the insights comparison. It defaults to running anyway, so I can see whereabouts I am. Then I might add one for heart rate and I might just drag that and put that below the activity. Then I might be tracking my running trainers in there. So I might add that onto the dashboard. And then I can choose my gear off here. So here you can see I've got the shoes that I've added. You can add bike and then you've got all of your golf clubs and then you can add other. You need to do this in your settings rather than in here. But once it's in there, you can just choose that bit of gear, hit save, and then it will give you that on your dashboard. Uh, what else do we want? What else do we want? Might add my badges on there so I can see any badges that I've picked up. And then I might add my challenges on there just so I can see how I'm doing. Let's say I add something to the dashboard that I don't want. So I've added floors climbed on there and quite clearly it's not tracking it for whatever reason. So if I want to remove it, click on the cog and then hit remove. And then maybe I might just add body battery so I can see how much energy I'm supposed to have left and maybe decide whether I will or won't run. And there you go, you can see quite quickly, I've set up a dashboard with general information around running that I'd like to see. But I know what you're thinking, it's not quite as detailed as I'd like it. Well, if you wanna supercharge your dashboard, that's where reports come in. So if I go and add reports, I'm gonna get this picker and it's gonna show me all of the really specific detailed reports that I might wanna see. Let's say I wanna see VO2 max on there. Now I can see my VO2 max on there, which you could see on the general list of categories isn't available. Same thing again, if I had another report, I could choose average pace. So there you can see my previous seven days running. There's only one activity on there, but you can see the pace is there. And this is how you can really tailor your dashboard to your specific requirements. There are 47 different reports that you can add, and they are the ones that are a bit more detailed than some of the standard tiles. For running, for instance, you can see there's some really specific reports that you can add, like cadence, pace, running speed, stride length. You can add things like your fitness age, your lactate threshold, and your training status. This is the full list here if you want to pause the video, but you can see you can make up a pretty detailed dashboard just by adding reports alone. And that's custom dashboards. Let me know your thoughts on this video below. If you've got any questions, leave them down there too. I will do my best to answer them. Would you like a full walkthrough of GarmaConnect.com? I don't know. It's pretty big. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.